Not everyone goes through the route of formal professional training in the academic sphere. Some opt for crafts, and to train for same, they have to enroll as apprentices. Today on Law Express, we discuss apprenticeships. We'll go for a quick commercial break. Don't go away. When we come back, you get to meet my co-panelists for today. Stay tuned. My name is Noella Seydu. My mother passed down to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children, right from the Violon Shea butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea butter products for our skin care needs. Violon Shea butter, feed your skin right. Kwesi Fredua Ajiman Danso. Kwesi is a private legal practitioner. He has interest in reading and he paints as well. Main studio here, Nana Benya Koti. She is also a private legal practitioner. She enjoys braiding hair, baking, and interacting with the youth. Noella Seidu. Noella is a private legal practitioner and a consistent member of our three lawyer panel on the show. She plays a dual role as the host of the show and likes to play tennis and read. So first of all, we have to define what apprenticeship is. We, we can't just throw the, 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 the word around and not tell people what it means. So apprenticeship simply means understanding a craftsman. So you have someone, a master, perhaps a, a seamstress or a welder, you are understudying. So it, in, it is governed by the Children's Act. Okay, so the laws that govern it, we talk about the Children's Act. Of course, you have to talk about some aspects of the Labor Act as well. So simply put, that's, that's, that's about what it is. Apprenticeship, understudying someone. So you are studying on the job. Um, perhaps we should uh, talk about the kind of crafts that commonly um, in our environment we have people um, go to study or train yeah. for. Generally, we are looking at apprenticeship being something in the informal sector. Uh, we're looking at seamstresses, we're looking at mechanics, we are looking at all sorts of uh, craftsmen. Hairdressers. Hairdressers as well. And uh, because of the nature of the informal sector being very big in Ghana. I think this is a common um, situation we find in everyday life. Apprenticeship happens uh, commonly in a lot of our work environment. And what you would notice most of the time is that most uh, craftsmen who take on apprentices do not even know that there is a regulation, there is actually some law that regulates all of these uh, activities and clearly when you look at the children's act because most of the time people who are engaged as apprent apprentices are people who have just co uh, completed basic education and in fact it is a requirement under the children's act that whoever is going to be engaged as an apprentice should have at least completed basic education or should be 15 years of age before you do that. So I want to believe that the idea of insisting or the law requiring that anybody going to subscribe as an apprentice must have completed basic education is just because of the free compulsory basic education policy our country currently has. So that you don't make the excuse that, oh, she's going to learn a trade, so let me keep the child at home, as again, sending the child to school. Also, perhaps, because, yes, you are an apprentice, you are a hairdresser, but you should 
be able to um, at least communicate with people in basic English language. You should be able to take uh, records and all of that. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take us back to the um, qualifying age for apprenticeships, yeah. which is 15. Our law says that anybody below the age of 18 is a child. A child. Yeah. So this is one of those unique opportunities where children are admitted into the work environment Exactly. Okay, exactly. and the law permits so same. Exactly. So it's you. We know you are fifteen. You are a minor, but because it's viewed as continuing education, continuing education, the law then says, okay, we should allow you because you say you don't want to do formal um, academic work. You want to learn uh, with your hands and from observation mm -hmm. and all of that. You know, we we shouldn't forget that even this profession started like that way. Yeah, you have to yes. the legal Even profession. the legal profession, <laughs> the profession we, 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 we all belong, belong yeah. to, started this way. Legal, the legal profession started with apprenticeship, where uh, oh, young, young people would understudy a master, a lawyer, and then eventually become lawyers themselves. But of course, it is not so anymore. So it is essentially education. Education where the, the, the student, in this case the, the apprentice, it's actually learning on the job, actually doing the work to learn it. More practical. Practical, very yeah. practical. On the daily. Exactly. <laughs> I think you can now um, perhaps uh, let us delve more into the requirements of an apprenticeship agreement as you've already mentioned. Yes. When you look at the legal regime that actually regulates the apprenticeship as we have it in Ghana, it is actually one of the necessary requirements that you have a written agreement. Now, written agreement here does not mean that you are going to have um, a lawyer draft a 10-page <laughs> agreement. No, but that is allowed. It, it is allowed. I mean, don't take the business from the lawyers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think we should also situate our discussion within the context of the informal sector and how this applies to the daily lives of a lot of people who engage in apprenticeship. Now, when you look at the apprenticeship agreement as we have it under our Children's Act, essentially, we are looking at a situation where the child is well catered for under the agreement. Mm -hmm. So the basic needs of the apprentice, and like you said, because this is a peculiar situation where you have a minor or a child being in a workspace, mm -hmm. we still need to take care of that child's basic needs. I think you're going ahead um, to talk about the responsibilities of the craftsman because once you introduce the basic needs, then um, it's, that should be provided by the master. Okay. I, I was thinking that perhaps we could talk more about the agreement in itself. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps who will be the people to put together the agreement? We mentioned that the child probably is 15. So it means that it's the parent or guardian yeah, okay. and the craftsman that would put together the agreement. Now, as to what is in there, we need to talk about that because they have the free hand to decide how they want that relationship to be. The, mm -hmm. the law, the act actually actually suggest certain terms, terms to be there to okay. be to be provided in the yeah. in the apprenticeship agreement yes in fact um, in 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 our earlier discussion we were thinking that when you look at the companies act where companies have the the latitude to actually hire lawyers to draft regulations mm -hmm. then regulations and now constitutions even in that companies act it's there is a, a template of a, of of the regulations that companies adopt but in this situation where you have um, people in the informal sector, mm -hmm. usually people with very minimal education, I thought that the act would actually give a template of an agreement so that they simply adopt. Perhaps the, uh, the thinking is that they wouldn't even come to read it in the first place. But at least so it's how there. do they lift at it least, off? At least, at least it's, it's, the template is made available. This is where I agree. Careful. This is where I agree with Nana Fidia. You know, he mentioned the fact that it's not practical to expect that they would even seek legal services for these agreements. Exactly. 
But then again, I also think that that's because of the special nature of the relationship, mm -hmm. we should, over time, encourage the involvement of lawyers. So that, you know, some people would send their kids for apprenticeships and assume they've handed the child over like some kind of mini uh, guardianship exactly. or mini yeah. adoption. Yeah. Exactly. So it's your child. Mm -hmm. Raise the child Raise the anyhow child. you want. And regardless of what the child goes through, nobody's intervening. So a classic example of the reason why the apprenticeship agreement is very necessary and the provision for basic needs become one of the key elements that need to be in there mm -hmm. is the fact that when you take, for instance, uh, mechanics, and uh, this is not to call out <laughs> that particular uh, <laughs> craft, craft <laughs> but it's, it's an observation that yes, I'm sure yes. anybody in Ghana may have uh, taken note of. When it comes to a lot of the uh, mechanics, you would see apprentices who would not be provided any proper shelter. Yeah. They end up sleeping in cars, so sleeping in junkyards, in junkyards yeah. with uh, the, the 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 cars that yeah, are being fixed. Cars. Exactly, uh, who do not? They are not given any proper uh, nutrition. Um, they are not even paid any proper wages. And when you read the act, it is quite clear that wages need to be part of all of this that you can't some just form some form of allowance for the apprentice this is something that hardly happens rather is the parents or guardians of the apprentice that are mostly required to rather make payments to the craftsman yeah. exactly. that's what has always <laughs> been happening and i think that is uh it's great that we're having this conversation yeah. so that people know that yes the person is not perfect in the craft yet but He's helping. there's effort yes. in exactly. making exactly. you meet your targets. Yes. The least you can do is to keep the person something. Something to, to put body and soul together. Absolutely. Mm. Or to transport himself yeah. or herself to and fro. The cost of protective clothing gear tools. We shouldn't forget that a lot of these um, apprentices are being engaged in informal sector where they would require some tools or protective clothing if it's uh, in uh, shoemaking, for instance, mm -hmm. they would need some protective gear in yeah, for the hands, for the especially, hands, yeah. especially if it's in a mechanics workshop. Same thing. If it is dressmaking, they would need tools. So this has to be catered for. Whether it's the guardian who is going to do that, or it is the craftsman, that is the master craftsman who is going to provide all of that. These have to be factored in. Into the agreement. Into the agreement. And all of this is to protect the apprentice who, as we have already indicated, is usually a minor. In a few instances, yes, you may have um, people who are already uh, of age going into apprenticeship. But because of the nature of the apprenticeship as we have it in Ghana, usually being something that affects minors, yeah. all of these have to be taken care of in the agreement. Um, we've talked a bit about this agreement and it's clearly to set out the terms, conditions, rights, duties and obligations um, of the parties in this arrangement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we go further into the responsibilities of the craftsmen towards the apprentices? Yes. So the first responsibility mm -hmm. is that you are supposed to train this apprentice to the best of your abilities and skills. And not only that, but also to the ability of the apprentice. Mm -hmm. You don't want the situation where you have um, a 15-year-old carrying a whole engine. <laughs> yes. Sorry that we are going back to the mechanics. <laughs> because it's because we, we, we take our cars and we see, we see what that. happens yes. there. You need to make sure that what you are given, the task you are given this apprentice is not beyond the, the, the apprentice's abilities. So it has to be according to your abilities. You are training, you are giving him the best. So let's take an example as um, catering. You don't want the situation where you have taken on an apprentice and yet you are keeping some secrets. You are not teaching the, this apprentice the secret to making that kick. Yeah. They will tell you it's a... It's a trace. <laughs> but, but you're supposed to. You have an obligation. 
is you have an obligation to train the, the, the apprentice. We can actually refer to the apprentice as a student. Yes. To train the student to the best of your abilities. So if you're not doing that, you're falling short of your responsibilities. I think um, to add to that, you also have to consider the best ability of the apprentice as well. Yes. So you would have different levels of abilities mm -hmm. if you have different um, apprentices. Uh, apprentices. Yes. If this person is a fast learner, it's your responsibility to help the person excel. If the person has caught up with everything and there are new innovations, it is still your yeah, responsibility yeah. to help him or her catch up. Yes. It also goes to say that if the person is a slow learner, and can time. never attain the absolute peak, you still have to accommodate the person to the best of his exactly. or her yeah. ability. Yes. And uh, tied in with that is also the fact that you're responsible, that is the master craftsman, for whatever uh, harm that befalls the apprentice. In the course of the, uh, the, course of the, of the apprenticeship. apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not forget, because the apprentice may not be an employee in the proper sense of the word, um, things like uh, our Labor Act itself and also workmen's compensation may not apply immediately, but because of the provision that you are in charge of him and you're supposed to take care of whatever happens to him, mm -hmm. in case during the apprenticeship some uh, injury befalls the apprentice in the course of work, you're supposed to provide medical care you're supposed to ensure that the apprentice receives, you know, adequate uh, care for the injury that has been sustained. Um, I know that there are a few instances that I have personally seen apprentices who have been injured in the course of apprenticeship and the master craftsman is a bit aloof because at the end of the day, I am helping you. And that has been usually the posturing of a lot of the master craftsman that I'm helping you and I think it's also stems yeah. from this cultural notion which we need to debunk today that no the child hasn't been brought to you as though you know <laughs> like a servant a servant but yeah. you are there as a teacher to help that child so it's just like formal education and like um, the structure in the formal space but this is an informal formal. arrangement so you are playing the role of a tutor or exactly. teacher. Yeah. I think that we also have to add that yeah. it's the responsibility of the craftsman to make sure he or she is present in the training of this person or to make sure that somebody else who has been nominated to do the training is supervised actually, by yes. him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you know that you are uh, into roofs and all and your company is quite large so you have other um, people with your proficiency skill or level and you can send the apprentice with those other people but you yeah, need but to you make need sure to. that the process is supervised because yeah. you were the one entrusted with the responsibility. Responsible. Ultimately yeah. responsible. And don't forget that you see these these apprentices usually are still young yeah. and so it is the responsibility of the master oh. the craftsman to see to the moral upbringing yeah. of that apprentice. And that is where the big problem is. <laughs> yes. What is the moral upbringing by whose standards? Standard. So, <laughs> example, in cases where per the agreement the apprentice is supposed to live with a master craftsman, mm -hmm. you will not ensure that your children are inside after a certain time and then allow the apprentice out gallivanting, perhaps sleeping around. Or working. Night work. Night, Night work. work. Yes, yes, possible. <laughs> you don't. You don't allow that because yeah. you are responsible for that period. You are responsible for the child's moral upbringing as well. You see, um, this situation or this question of what falls within this the sphere of moral upbringing or right mor moral upbringing is what has led to many people um, abusing their apprentices. Yeah. So, for instance, you are a hairdresser. Your apprentice doesn't live with you, and this is very rife. And she comes to work, she cleans the salon, sorts mm -hmm. out everything. And instead of staying to learn, you send her to your home to wash, Thanks. go exactly. to the market, cook, sort out everything. And she's not learning. And she's not learning, learning anything. anything. Exactly. So if she was uh, um, contracted to stay with you for three years, she ends up six years later with no Good. experience and becomes your domestic help. So I, I think what you're saying is, 
clearly a situation where you have a master apprentice, a master craftsman abusing the uh, relationship. relationship that yeah. has been set up. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why you have the Children's Act having all these things in there to protect mm -hmm. the apprentice. Okay. Now, it says finally that you're supposed to look out as the master craftsman for the best interest of the apprentice. Right. And that is paramount. It, it, it is the main reason why as the master craftsman you have been entrusted with the training oh, of yeah, this apprentice. apprentice. And once you are looking out for the best interest of that apprentice, this issue of using the apprentice as domestic help clearly goes out of the picture. And like you're saying, I, I know that it is also rife. It is something that a lot of people are not aware they even have any rights to object to. We would uh, have to now move on to the responsibilities or duties of the apprentice as well, because yeah. it's a two-way um, affair. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. before we get there, we'll go for a quick commercial break. When we return, we touch on that uh, quickly and then go on to the other aspects of this conversation. Okay. Don't go away. Stay tuned. This is still Law Express. My mother has done to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea Butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children, right from birth. Violon Shea Butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea Butter products for our skin care needs. Violon Shea Butter, feed your skin right. So having talked about the responsibilities of the master craftsman, we have to talk about the responsibilities of the apprentice because definitely it's a, it's a two-way relationship. Yeah. The apprentice also has responsibilities. And one of them is to obey and faithfully serve I like the, the master craftsman. Yes, <laughs> faithfully serve the master craftsman. But we shouldn't take it out of context. That is, this is where the, it's the abuse, issue we talked about. The, yes, yes, the issue of abuse, abuse. comes in. Yeah. Because if the apprentice is supposed to obey, yeah. faithfully serve, mm -hmm. then diligently, diligently and, faithfully and faithfully obey mm -hmm. and serve. Exactly. It's like a marriage. Oh. <laughs> so you see, I think. I, I think that is where we need to stress yes. the fact that in all of this, we should situate it in the context of continuing education. Yes. So obedience, just as in any educational institution, you would have to obey your instructors. It's the same thing here. It does not mean that your instructors are at liberty to abuse that obedience mm -hmm. you are given yes. to now take the work that you've been brought there to learn and yeah. you have you, you sideline that and tell the apprentice to go and do domestic chores. You can so do it's that. about reasonableness. Yeah. Reasonable and, and it should the be context. in the best should, interest of the, the child at, at all times. At all times. At yeah. every level of the agree of the arrangement, the best interest of the child should be paramount. So if you are listening and you are a master craftsman, for instance you are a seamstress who has your own shop and you have uh, apprentices, and you keep sending them <laughs> to go and pound fufu, to go and prepare palm nut soup for you. I say for Bayer Kitchen. <laughs> you should know from listening to this that, that that is wrong. It's wrong. You are not entitled to do that. The it's obedience wrong. of your apprentices does not turn them into servants. They are yeah. slaves. And your slaves. They are there to obey your instructions yes. regarding the training training and the reason and the why crafts, we are there, yeah. the crafts. Mm -hmm. Now, linked into that, we should also not uh, lose sight of the fact that because it is continuing education, the apprentice cannot absent himself, <laughs> him or herself, 
you know, uh, want only. You, you can choose whether I'll come today, yes. tomorrow. I don't, I don't feel like going. No. Yeah. Just like in... Who is supervising this? <laughs> Who, is Who is marking the register? Oh, the master craftsman. You cannot absent you yourself. Absent yourself. You cannot just and if you absent yourself, I know in most um, institutions, if we we, we we can call it that way, most um, trades, most crafts, they have their own peculiar uh, rules and yeah. regulations. I know in some. Uh, institutions, dressmaking, you would be told if you have sent yourself for three, four days without any reason or without seeking permission, just like in a school, you would be punished for that. Queried. Queried. Uh, at and, the minimum. Uh, yes. yes. But I think this um, should also be part of the agreement. Yes. Where you indicate the yes. number that's, of that's days you are allowed so to absent important. yourself so yes. and whether public holidays and weekends are part of the agreement. So it's like almost like an employment uh, yes. contract. Contract. Yes. <laughs> you know, because I know. In fact, I know. I know with some seamstresses. I, I think I noticed this with some seamstress where, even when you're late, mm -hmm. you are made to pay a certain amount. Wow. Yes. Where will you find the money? <laughs> so if you know you're not going to find the money, be punctual. But you could be it, it, late. It, I think it's for, a way. Uh, it's a way. Reason. Of, but for 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 uh, apprentices who have the habit of always arriving late. So habitual late Habitual late comers <laughs> would definitely <laughs> get something from that. And then we can talk about preventing deliberate damage to the craftsman's equipment yeah. or tools. Yes. Okay, so somebody has availed his um, practice to you. You are learning the trade. Yeah. You should learn to take good care of the tools. Take good care of the equipment. You don't, you don't abuse them. You don't destroy them. It is, it, is, it is very, very important. Um, and just to chip in, looking at a lot of the trades, mm -hmm. you know, um, the tools, the equipment, are the main stock in trade, yeah. in trade yeah. for a lot of these, um, you know, um, tradesmen or craftsmen. Mm -hmm. So if you are causing deliberate damage, essentially what is going to happen is that over time, then the person won't be able to train more people. Yeah. But I think that just like we keep hammering on the issue of the agreement, yeah. all of these things should be categorically stated in the agreement, yeah. just to make it clear to the apprentice that yeah. it's part of your duties. If you yeah. do this, you're going to replace the value of that particular item. But you know, you know the accidents happen. Accidents happen. Accidents happen. <laughs> so we so accommodate is, those. Yes, we accommodate those, but when you are accidentally damaged, you don't conceal it. Mm. Yeah. It's a responsibility here. You do not conceal <laughs> it. <laughs> so it's a two-step responsibility. Yes. Yes. Don't damage Don't damage. The if you deliberately. damage, don't conceal. <laughs> Yes. No matter the reason, <laughs> yes, if it's out of fear, <laughs> you need to do full disclosure. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. I broke the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive, but you broke it. Yes. We sampled the views of people on the streets, okay. as usual. And um, let's see what they have on the topic. I mean, let's gather their thoughts and see if we could react to those briefly. All right. No. Size of being an apprentice is you get low pay and then you're not recognized as you being a boss and I don't think apprentices should serve their bosses in the house example like you see hairdressers some of them they ask their apprentices to come and um, scrub their bathrooms wash their dishes like it's just not right apprenticeship in our part of the world is something like uh, a servitude or service where uh, people, you know, who want to learn or acquire a skill basically go to uh, someone with that experience to learn. But sometimes, recently, just uh, during the week, I saw one particular lady uh, who is an apprentice uh, with a hairdressing salon. And there's a mother who was asked to kneel then. I felt this that is very humane, uh, inhumane, you know, and demeaning 
for you for one to ask, you know, a mother, a whole mother, and a wife for that matter. Apprentices shouldn't serve their masters in their house, yeah. Because sometimes when they get to their bosses' homes, they are supposed to fetch water, clean the houses, and then do a lot of things. I don't think apprentices should serve their bosses at home. It's a complete no to me. We live in the twenty-first century. In as much as I'm, I am an apprentice, I also have a life of my uh, a life on my own. You know, I have stuff that I need to do at home. I have, I have to think. I have to reason. I have to plan. So, if I if this little time upon all my stress I still have to go to my boss's house to uh, carry out some chores for my boss. I, I, I think that is very, very wrong. Yes, they should help their bosses at home. But it shouldn't be something their bosses should take advantage of as in ignoring the reason why the apprentice came for the this thing and then every day work, 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 work. Some sometimes helping your bosses at home bridge the gap between you and the boss and sometimes it enables the uh, boss to even teach you something new because of how you respect and humble yourself so to me I think yes those who work as apprentices should not work for their masters because I mean it takes away their time I mean they came to work for something for their personal selves and not for their bosses so yeah I think they shouldn't work for them I think that those are varied uh, <laughs> opinions yes, on yeah, it. Yes, but a general trend uh, runs through. Uh, you can notice how the general perception that you have to go and carry out activities in or domestic chores seems to be uh, something that a lot of people abhor. Yes, yes. But I, like I, 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 I like what uh, one of the young ladies said. Mm. There's a place for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said something very important that when you get close to your, 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 your boss, that's how she put it, he or she may teach you something that the others may miss. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the boss, as, as in the master craftsman, should not abuse that opportunity. opportunity. I think uh, for some reason, uh, al allowing the apprentices to do certain, certain chores, of course not taking them away from the reason why they are there, build some form of discipline but again it has to be in moderation it has to be for a particular purpose and not abuse i kind of disagree because mm. um it will depend on what you are learning what you're learning that's that, that's also yeah, true that's, so that's true if you're learning housekeeping you're learning catering and yeah. the um crafts person yeah. has maybe a special order at home and wants you to support for that's a fee right. or something like that at least uh, for, for as long as you're cooking within that home space, when you're done, you have to clean this, the, the, the environment. Exactly. Exactly. And it's part of the training. training. But I think, well, you see, the, the difference here will be if the, the business is located away from the home, yeah. and this master crafts man or woman sent the apprentice to the house to do that, that I have a problem with. But the question but if it is, is at home. The question is, even if it's at home, at what point are you leaving? For instance, you're a hairdresser. Yes. The shop is at the front of your home. Mm -hmm. There are people doing their hair, and you are insisting that one of them should stop whatever she's doing and go and, and, go clean. and clean, cook, shop for you. How does this become a very important aspect of the training at that point? It's different if perhaps... Um, that day you don't have clients and that person herself perhaps volunteers because she knows that you are a bit under the weather and you mm. it's it's a different conversation okay. but some people make it compulsory all right so if i may double in yeah. i i think in all of this um apprenticeship itself let's not forget is informal in nature yeah. and the children's act it's it takes recognizes, recognizes that, yeah. the fact that it's informal and hence introduces things like the moral upbringing of the apprentice. Just like Nana was saying, uh, all of this would have to be in context. Yes. If an apprentice resides with the master craftsman or craftswoman, yeah. some of these household chores would come in tandem come in, with yes. the training. Yes. If the apprentice does not stay with the master craftsman or craftswoman, then we are looking at a different situation. And again, whether those chores we are talking about are in any way linked 
to the through training. The, the training. Yeah. Uh, and when we are talking about training here, because it's not just formal education, the training will also include education that has to do with the person's uh, moral upbringing and sometimes social skills as well. So the key point is that you need to ask how does this enhance, enhance the person's the experience, the experience in the training, in the training process? Training process. Yes. The master craftsman or craftswoman has the right to train and punish. We yes. should not forget all of yes. this mm -hmm. because the training would come with sometimes correcting the person mm -hmm. and correction sometimes comes with punishment. punishment. But the punishment should not be one that is being meted out in a manner that degrades the degrades person the individual. or yes. you know affects the yeah. person's human rights so all of this should be in context and so corporal punishment has no, no place in has this no arrangement place. it has in this, no place in this arrangement in this arrangement you see what you're doing you because you're also responsible for the overall upbringing of this apprentice if you punish this way what you're doing you are you are, you are destroying this person's self-esteem this person may be um, a senior to another apprentice. Imagine how this other apprentice is going to view her or him. So it also takes away from the safety and health of the environment right. exactly. that the person will be. Yes. So we need to send out a strong warning. You don't go about caning no. your apprentices, getting they them can, to yeah, nail down, kneel down in the sun, in the sun and that's, 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 you know, that's, all that's of those other... Because when we say corporal punishment, some people might not get the yeah. full uh, context. Um, it's time for another break. has done to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children right from the Violon Shea butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea Butter products for our skincare needs. Violon Shea Butter, feed your skin right. So you have now, after signing your agreements, after learning, over the period of time, mm -hmm. pair the agreement, and um, the apprentice has now attained full knowledge to the best of his or her ability of the skill that you are imbibing in him or her, the law requires that at some point you have to okay. servitize for the person to start his own life. Mm -hmm. yes. What are the um, um, parameters of this release? Okay. Um, so essentially with the release you are looking at a situation where the master craftsman one of the parameters essentially is that the master craftsman or craftswoman you should not put any stumbling blocks in the way of <laughs> yeah. you know the apprentice it shouldn't be exploitative for instance i've come to understudy you i i am ready to now set out on my own and the release you know, <laughs> some measure some big amount. Yeah, you are mentioning not just the amount, it, more like yes. today, tomorrow, next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have to jump through hoops to be able to meet the requirements that uh, you have put, laid down. Quite clearly, that is exploitative. Yeah, it's, it's this is quite common. It where is. people can stay as an apprentice for like ten years straight. Yeah. From childhood till their mothers themselves, <laughs> and they are still apprentices. They are still, yes, they're still, yeah. they're still but there. But there should be a reason for that. Shouldn't yeah. it be a thing of emotional attachment apart from the service? But let's <laughs> let let the let the let the apprentice take the decision to stay. Yeah. yeah. See, give the apprentice the opportunity mm -hmm. to move, to move us, release release him or her, and let her decide to. Oh, I want to I want to work with you. I want to continue working. But with that you. In now case, becomes a different exactly, relationship. It becomes a different relationship. Yeah, but I'm employing cost, him exactly. At all costs, you have to release when the training is over. And tied in with that is, and when we are talking about exploitative, you know, um, 
some of these exploitative mechanisms. We are looking at a situation where an apprentice is ready, you know, the release requirements involve monies, it involves sometimes throwing a party, <laughs> and it happens, yeah. you know, you have to do all sorts of things, yeah, yeah. you know, where they, they would usually set up a whole, you know, buffet have party, have a chairman, and, have a chairman. <laughs> and we are talking about oh, somebody. Oh, and dress alike. Hey, yes. They dress. We are talking about. And these days they even wear ropes and oh, graduation. Nice. Hey, yes. We are talking about somebody who hasn't really uh, properly worked a day in his or her life and having to show that there's responsibility quite clearly if the person is not up for it, that in itself becomes a stumbling block. So it means that in this case, you've been your 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 master craftsman is saying that I release you, but, but you need to meet these requirements in exactly. order for the ceremony to take place. Please. So now they put in very high um, financial obligations, obligations. Knowing which very now well. ties you down. Ties you down because so, you know he knows or she knows that you cannot meet those requirements. And in the meantime, you are working for him. You still <laughs> <attend>. Yes, <laughs> you're still working because at this point you have learned the trade. You are you are an expert uh, yourself. Yes. So you are working for him, and he's making the money and still keeping you on an allowance. But, oh, but this, sometimes nothing. This would also tie into the fact that there is no written down agreement. Yeah. Because if there was an agreement, it would have specified the release terms as well. Because every agreement has to have a termination clause, yeah. or, yeah. or you know, an That's end why expiry date. We cannot. Day. We cannot overemphasize the need for a written agreement. And the reason why I think discussions like this should not end here but should be a continual thing because the reality is that about 99 percent of apprenticeships that go on in this country are not documented yeah. you do not have any written agreement and it ends up being exploitative in nature although the apprenticeship relationship is informal the law still requires certification upon completion, upon completion. Upon completion. Yeah. and even puts in <laughs> some penalties for yes, failure of for a failure craftsman to, yes. to issue a certificate. You could go to prison or pay a fine for failing to, to um, award yeah. a certificate, actually, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So um, the certification is very key. And... Um, and Let's not forget that apprenticeship in the informal sector, most often than not, because we've, we've, we keep hammering there is no written agreement, no written agreement. Certification, paperwork, showing that the person has person indeed completed. Has that training. Yeah. And passed that Because there's no other evidence yes. no that evidence. you were trained. Yes. It could just be that you are freestyling your way around. <laughs> no. And it's key. The, the law wants to ensure that the apprentice at the end of it all is not shortchanged. So I think the certificates open opportunities for the apprentice post training because um, you 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 are now a mechanic, okay, after it's many years of training. Yes. Assuming you don't have certification, how do you go into the formal industry? For instance, maybe a, an auto shop to yes, be to in show there. That you how have do you actually, prove it? It is continuous education. It's part of your education, though informal. So it's the it evidence of the that evidence education. of having had that education. Great. Um, some questions have come in um, on our social media handles. If we could just quickly have a look and okay. then uh, attempt to answer them. If okay. We can. Yeah. Hi, Nuhela. I was training as an apprentice with a mechanic. He sent me and one other colleague to go and pick a client's car to the shop. On our way back to the shop, we had an accident and the car got damaged. My boss insists we must pay for the damage. He doesn't even pay us as apprentices and we didn't take the car on our own. He sent us. He has now sacked me from work never to return until I pay for the damage. He has actually threatened to report me to the police if I don't pay. He has sacked me though. What can I do? This Come particular see, situation see. is a bit interesting. <laughs> but but I, I, I think once, one, clearly if the instruction was received from 
the master craftsman mm -hmm. that go do this for me and there is an accident insofar as they did not hide the damage from the master craftsman and were open enough to tell him this is the situation that arose this is just like any other legal situation where in the course of your work you have ended up with damaging the tools yes. a, a, with <laughs> yeah. you know more a, like a, yes and if that is the situation you are not supposed to be just sacked from yeah. the employment as though you had uh, gone on your own frolic or that it appears we are simplifying it because i see a situation where this apprentice is not a driver yeah. Did the master he has no, come. Did he have a license? Yes. yes. And he has come. Even if he did, he came to learn to, learn. to fix cars, yes. not to and you um, send him um, to go convey, pick a vehicle. You know, people's vehicles, vehicles from one place. He's not a tow, you know, operator. Exactly. You know, so this is a situation where you've even put him in danger. In danger. Yes. Because yes. he's gone out upon your instructions, instructions. Um, and now there was an accident and. There's nothing from the question that suggests that he even cared about his well-being. Well, -being. He, it well it's all about true that he didn't mention any vehicle. injury, but I see that the fixation has been on the vehicle. I see the fear here. It's because it's a client's vehicle. Perhaps it's an expensive one. But he didn't the master go himself on his own. cannot yeah. fix yes. it. <laughs> but then you need to look at the situation. You yes. sent him. You sent him. And whatever happens is on you. Yes. yes. And the 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 well-being should be paramount. Yeah. Just like you said, quite clearly, the well-being of this well apprentice, of apprentice wasn't paramount in the discussion. It was about getting the car fixed. And even getting the car fixed, it's not the situation where you would say he had gone on a frolic of his own. It was on your instructions. If, if they, they had brought the vehicle oh. in and the vehicle had been fixed, he would have been paid. paid. I would have pocketed the money. The apprentice wasn't going to get anything. So if there's a damage to the vehicle because of your own errand, sending him on an errand, it should be the master's cost. And we must state that this is different from circumstances where you fix somebody's car and then the apprentice sneaks out oh, with exactly. it, yes. test drive, and then he no. crashes yes. it. Yes. That's Here, different. you authorized him, him to go for the car. And the owner of the car also knew that. This is not my mechanic, <laughs> but was willing to release the key. Mm -hmm. So it's a situation of uh, whether or not the car was insured at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But then there will be the other burden where if he's not licensed, then he also loses the insurance cover yes. <laughs> option. Oh, yes, that's, you know? that's, so that's it's very true. It's like that a conundrum, works. but mm. it's all on the, um, the apprentice, the, the, uh, the craftsman. The craftsman sorry. Yes. People have the free will to be craftsmen. And in order to be a craftsman or woman, duly qualified and certified, you ought to go through an apprenticeship training. Now, that relationship, as we have discussed today, is also regulated by our laws. And so it does not give people the free hand to deal unfairly with people who have come to be trained in a skill or expertise. Today on Law Express, we've had two private legal practitioners, Theodosia Nana Benir Kote Mrs and Kwesi Fridua Ajiman Danso. My name is Noella Seidu. Thank you for staying with us um, on the topic of apprenticeships. We will see you again same time next week. This has been Law Express.